Hello, this is Dr. Karthik from Medlife. In this video, we will learn a little bit about what are the common blood tests that doctors recommend if a patient is said to have type 2 diabetes. As all of us know, diabetes is of two kinds, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes, out of which we see that type 2 diabetes is the commonly detected and in terms of numbers of patients, type 2 diabetes is more prevalent uh, in comparison with type 1 diabetes. It is always said that by the time a patient is detected or diagnosed to have type 2 diabetes, almost 50% of his beta cells in the pancreas have become dysfunctional or non-functional. Beta cells are those special cells in the pancreas which secrete the insulin hormone and as all of us know, insulin hormone present in normal levels is extremely critical to maintain the normal levels of glucose in the blood and hence maintain normal functions of all blood cells and to maintain the normal growth functions of the human body. So therefore, what are the tests which a doctor will conduct to basically diagnose, detect and then later on manage type 2 diabetes? The first commonest test is what we call as the oral glucose tolerance test. So typically in this, a patient is actually uh, first uh, fasting, so you will first take the fasting blood sample, fasting blood sugar as we call it as. Fasting blood sugar generally should be in the range of 70 to 100 milligram per deciliter to be called normal. The moment it becomes 100 or above, it is said to be abnormal and a reading above 130 is definitely considered to be uh, abnormally high and uh, that is the diagnosis of uh, type 2 diabetes as well. So therefore, once the patient's fasting sugar is taken, the patient is given uh, glucose water or a, glucose or a sugar uh, water sample. The patient uh, takes uh, the sugar water and after a duration of 90 to 120 minutes, typically two hours post consumption of the sugar sample, there is a sample of blood taken again, which is the which is basically to test that once sugar is consumed by the body, the normal response of the pancreas should be to increase the secretion of insulin to make sure that the consumed blood sugar is you know, metabolized appropriately and the blood sugar levels are maintained within normal limits. This can only happen when with the consumption of the glucose, the body's pan the pancreas responds adequately with production of the adequate amount of insulin. So, in a patient with normal glucose tolerance, even after consuming the sugar water, the sugar, uh, the blood sugar level will generally not exceed 140 milligram per deciliter. But if the blood sugar exceeds 140 or 100, sometimes 180 milligram per deciliter, then the patient may have type 2 diabetes, which you would further confirm by doing the third test. So, first is fasting sugar, second one is postprandial or after consuming the food or the sugar sample. And then you would do the third test which we call as the HbA1c or glycosylated hemoglobin which looks at what is the three month average blood sugar level that the patient has had. And uh, the average blood sugar level or the HbA1c level is considered to be normal if it is between 4 to 6. The moment a patient has got an HbA1c level between 6 to 7, it is considered to be pre-diabetes or borderline diabetes. And the moment the blood sugar level exceeds 7, the patient has overt type 2 diabetes. And then the management of type 2 diabetes has to start immediately. So lifestyle modification, diet, exercise and medicines will be started. And the patient, every patient is set to reach a target of 7 of HbA1c and that is the right blood sugar control that every patient should aim for and should achieve. Now why is it important to maintain blood sugar level within these normal limits in a diabetic, in a type 2 diabetic patient? Because if the patient does not maintain a normal blood sugar level and a tight control of HbA1c level of 7, then high levels of blood glucose will start damaging the various organs of the body. This is what we call as complications of type 2 diabetes. So what are the common complications? One set of complications we call them as microvascular complications. Basically these are complications that impact the small blood vessels of the body, the ones that are present in the eye, we call it as retinopathy. High blood sugar can lead to diabetic retinopathy, the person can become blind, the person can lose vision. Second type of small blood vessels are in the kidney. So high blood sugar, uncontrolled, not managed well, can damage the kidney cells and that can lead to kidney failure. Third thing, small blood vessels are supplying the nerves of the human body. So 
if the small blood vessels damage uh, then they can affect the nerve supply or and therefore the nerves get damaged we call that condition as diabetic neuropathy the person loses sensation of pain the person can injure himself and if the person injure himself in diabetic patients without uh, you know control of blood sugar the wounds do not heal well the infection can be very severe and if it is in the leg the patient can develop you know diabetic foot diabetic uh, wound or injury and if uncontrolled if not treated well if sugar is not brought in control it can lead to gangrene and may require amputation of the foot or the amputation of the leg so therefore microvascular complications start, can affect the eye diabetic retinopathy loss of vision it can affect the kidney we call it diabetic nephropathy or diabetic kidney disease it can affect the nerves which is diabetic neuropathy which leads to loss of pain sensation injury uh, increased infection from the injury or wounds and it may lead to amputation or gangrene so the second set of complications which occur if diabetes is not kept in control is what we call the macrovascular complications of diabetes which affect the large size blood vessels the first is the heart disease or cardiovascular disease where uncontrolled high blood sugar can cause blockages in the coronary arteries which are the arteries supplying the heart that leads to a heart attack heart disease second is the blockage of the blood vessel supplying the brain high blood sugar can lead to blockage of the blood vessel supplying to the brain it leads to cerebrovascular disease or stroke the third is peripheral vascular disease the blood vessel supplying the hands and the legs can get blocked if the blood sugar remains high for a long time and that can lead to peripheral vascular disease and it can lead to gangrene and it may require amputation of the foot or the hands so therefore it is very very important and critical that all patients of type 2 diabetes number one get diagnosed early start treatment early and maintain good glycemic control or tight sugar control of managing their fasting blood sugar to keep it at 100 or less than 100 milligram per deciliter keep their postprandial sugar at less than 180 or preferably less than 160 milligram per deciliter and most importantly the three month average blood sugar that is hba1c or glycosylated hemoglobin to be kept at seven uh, and that is considered to be the right blood sugar control so hope this video is useful to you i wish all of you good health and it's very important once again uh, to make sure that type 2 diabetes may, patients uh, do their blood tests well take their medicines on time follow a, a strict diet and exercise regimen and are able to maintain a normal level of blood sugar hope you like this video subscribe to our youtube channel and look forward to more such videos